This is a 2010 Range Rover Sport HSC built on the L320 platform. Now this vehicle has been around for a while so this won't be an actual review but more of an insight into what luxury was on the high end for Range Rover back in the mid 2000s even the early 2000s because this model here ran from 2006 all the way up to 2013. So let's take a look around the vehicle starting with the dimensions because up close you can tell it's a really large and imposing vehicle. It has a commanding presence anywhere it's parked. Its overall length is 15.6 feet. The wheelbase, which is the distance between the front and the rear wheels, 9 feet. Height, 5.9 feet. Width, 6.3 feet. Ground clearance between 6.8 to 8.9 inches. It has a curb weight of 4,727 pounds or 2.3 tons. And the big numbers continue even across to the fuel tank because it has a fuel capacity of 105 liters. And because this vehicle uses premium gasoline, that is over 800 TC to full. So to fill the range over once, you can fill three Nissan Note e-power full to the brim with super gasoline. When it comes to wheels, you have large 295, 45, 20 inches. Each wheel can cost between 13 and 1900 TT, depending on brand, place you go, location, area, things like that. Now, when you're moving close to two and a half tons through the air, you need a way to stop it. And stopping power comes courtesy of Brembo brakes. I don't think ordinary brakes are able to stop a vehicle this size with the amount of power this vehicle has, but more on that later on. Now let's move around to the rear of the vehicle. Let's talk about the trunk space because there is a lot of trunk space. You can either only have the top half open like this or you can lift up the entire tailgate as one and it reveals this enormous trunk. The video doesn't do the size of this trunk justice. It's absolutely large as you would expect for a vehicle this big. You can fit anything you can possibly buy, shop, groceries, traveling, luggage. You can fit everything at the rear here. Under this mat, you can find your jack and your tow hook and stuff like that. No spare tire in here because the spare tire is located on the outside underneath the vehicle. But in here, you have your jacket, tow hook and other tools. To the right over here, you have this pocket which reveals a CD changer. Again, this vehicle is from the 2010s. You would never see this in a modern vehicle, but back in the 2010s, CDs were still the in thing. So having a six disc CD changer at the rear of your vehicle was the height of luxury, pinnacle of luxury. And not only that, as you can see, it played DVDs, VCDs, and other type of discs because in the vehicle, there were screens. So you can load up your movies, pictures, whatever you want the kids to see at the rear, and you're driving down the road. This was luxury back in 2010. Now you have an aux cord or Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and you're good to go. But back then, yes, this was it. Moving to the interior of the vehicle, starting with the rear, you have two AC vents. This center dial here controls the airflow. It's either on or off or in between. At the bottom, you have a cigarette lighter and an aux input. Now, this is the only aux input for the entire vehicle, which is letting you know that this was geared for backseat passengers. The boss rides in the back, so he controls the music. When not in use, you just fold the slap down and that prevents any dirt and grime from getting into those components. Below that, you have these two switches, which controls the rear heated seats. Yes, the rear seats are heated as well. Again, it was geared for luxury at the back here, but the front seats are also heated in this particular model, so you can either have it on, off, or on a medium setting. But how was seating at the rear? Well, you got in, you closed these large heavy tank like doors and you were ready to go on your journey. Now each door has very large windows. That is one thing with a vehicle this size. It is able to fit large windows so you can see out very clearly. Visibility really isn't an issue, especially for the passengers. Now at the rear here, as you would expect, you have tons of room to just sprawl off. You do have rear airbags and a light above the airbag. So just in case a stray in the sand slams to the side of your vehicle, you have rear airbags as well. Now look at the ergonomics of this vehicle. Each window sill is flat. So you can just put your hand there and it just rests, just gently rest there. And you can just rock back and relax as the driver drives you along. Now, you can see in the headrest, that is where the screens are located. So if you did use a CD changer and you did put a DVD or something at the rear there in your six disc CD changer, you can just view it here as you just have your hand on the windowsill, large windows looking out whenever you want to see what is taking place outside. Or you may have tents, you just have your tent, so you don't want to see what's taking place outside. You're just looking at your screens as your driver drives you along, you adjust your air vent so you can get the precise amount of cold air that you want as you just wallow over the road in comfort and safety. Now one thing 
in people in this tax bracket value is the peace and quiet when they want to each door if you look at it closely has a kind of tree rubber layout it's like it's, it's like a rubber next to a rubber that fits into a rubber in the main door and all this helps with sound isolation and it works when you are driving along you put the glass up you are literally numb to the outside you hear nothing aside from whatever music you're playing and some engine noise and road noise you don't hear cars just next to you you don't hear random songs of dogs barking it literally isolates you from the outside world you do not understand the difference in how vehicles are built until you drive a vehicle like this even this generation 2010 2009 and you can still almost hear nothing taking place outside the vehicle except for the engine and some road noise but more on that later in the driving portion of the video for now let's focus on the front because the front is more of the same just like the rear you have heated front seats left and right passenger and driver you have the same window sill here you can put your hand up and just relax you know it's a good place most vehicles you have a center armrest so you can put your right hand on if you are a passenger your left hand on if you are the driver but this vehicle you have both in fact you have three because each of the front seats have these center armrests that fold down so you can adjust your driving position and how comfortable you are just the way you like it. You can either put it on the center armrest, you can put it on the full long armrest, you can put your hand up on the window sill. Things to just make life better. These are the simple ergonomic touches that you don't find in most vehicles. And they make driving, especially driving long distances, that much more comfortable. Now with all this comfort and luxury, you need premium speakers so you can take your long comfortable drive while listening to the Fifth Symphony. And the audio in this vehicle is handled by a 600 watt Harman Kardon sound system. Now if you don't know anything about Harman Kardon, Harman Kardon is premium car audio. They are right up there with Fender and Bang & Olsen, premium stuff. Now I can hear someone saying 600 watts is not plenty. I have 2000, 3000, 4000 watts, okay. But like I just demonstrated, once you are in here with your glass up, you are in your own cocoon, isolated from all other road noises. So you don't need much power to hear your music. You're not going to be hearing the truck next to you. You're not going to be hearing the mounted loud muffler driving next to you as loudly as you would in a normal vehicle. So 600 watts is more than enough to hear any tune you want to play with your chest rumbling. Now, this vehicle doesn't have push to start, but that doesn't mean that they didn't try to make starting the vehicle as convenient as possible. You don't have to turn the key and hold it till the vehicle start. You just turn and let go, and the vehicle will start no matter how quickly you turn and let go. And then you can just sit there and listen to your engine roar to life but more on that engine later on for now let's focus on the inside starting with the front seats because aside from them being heated you had all the power adjustments you can tilt the entire base forward backward you can tilt where you're sitting on the front part up down like this you can tilt the entire base to the rear up down and you can tilt the backrest where your back is on forward or backward all of this was geared to make you as comfortable as possible because after all it's a large vehicle so you had to find the right seating position to be comfortable next let's take a look at the center console and infotainment system i'll focus more on the screen after but for now let's focus on this little section at the bottom here you have your lock unlock button your hazards light button as you can see you have your phone buttons there this again is showing you this is a car from the 2010s below that you have a cd inlet yes you could have put a cd in front here as well then below that you have your climate controls your heated seat controls in the center there it's dual zone so each side controls the independent side for the zoning here you have your gear shifter two large cup holders you have an electronic park and brake and below that you have other buttons now starting with this big wrong button here you push it it pops out and you can turn it either clockwise or counterclockwise doing this allows you to change the terrain that the vehicle thinks it's driving on so let's say you're driving on sand or snow or something you push it and then you select the corresponding icon it shows up on the screen in the center console and it also shows up here on the instrument cluster so you can see it turn it once to the right and you're going to get grass gravel snow 
you turn it again and you're gonna get mud rot so you can change depending on what you are on and the vehicle will change its four wheel capabilities depending on that and while you won't see anyone in their right mind taking their range over off-road in tnt they are very capable off-roading machines they are built for that their heritage is that even though now it's more of a symbol to yourself that have made it in life after all the hard work don't be fooled by all the niceness and niceties. They are very capable off-roading machines. More on that, here you can see I'm selecting either low range or high range. This is low range, so low range is selected. You can see it here and the icon over there. Then you can put it in high range. Again, you're gonna see it over here and the icon over there is gonna disappear. Now, is at this point, everyone will say, but it has an engine check light. Yes, it has an engine check light, but that is a Range Rover thing. If you have a Range Rover, you could expect to see a check light at least once per year. That is reminding you constantly that you have a real Range Rover. If you have a Range Rover and you have never seen an engine check light on your dashboard, carry it back. You have a bootleg Range Rover. That Range Rover wasn't made by Land Rover. That Range Rover is made by some plant in Detroit, Michigan or something by Ford. That's not a real Range Rover. This light, reminds you constantly that you are driving a Range Rover. Now that we have dealt with the elephant in the room, let's move on to more important matters of state. This button underneath the dial I just showed you all. Now the button to the right is what you use to engage the low range or the high range. We're talking about this one here. You push it up and it lifts the vehicle up if you are going off-roading or just want the vehicle to look high. You push it down and it will lower the vehicle back to normal height or it will drop it lower than normal height. So the vehicle will literally look like it has a stance even though it's from the factory. This is what it looks like from the outside. This is max height. So this is the highest the vehicle can be. This is the dropping down. Now this video is sped up by four, so it doesn't move this quickly in the real world. Probably takes like about two seconds from the highest to the lowest, but this is what it looks like. Now at this point here, this is what I was talking about. When the vehicle is drop low like this, it looks like it has a natural factory stance. Like wow, a Range Rover drop low. It looks cool. However, you cannot and should not drive the vehicle like this. Next, you're gonna see the back popping up right around here and followed by the front. This is what they call normal height. This is the height that the Range Rover will be at when you see it on the road every single day, day to day. This is normal height. It's right in the middle of access height, which is the lowest setting, and off-roading, which is the highest setting. Now let's move back into the vehicle. These are the armrests that I was speaking about earlier. It makes driving so much more comfortable. You can adjust precisely how high or how low they are. And it really helps. As you can see, it's a wide vehicle. So most people's arms won't be able to reach that center console there. So what you can do while you are driving, you just put your arm on the armrest and you're comfortable. These are the simple touches that separate premium luxury vehicles from just everyday vehicles. Look at it. It covers the entirety of my arm. But let's go across to that center screen I spoke about earlier on. Here you can see all four wheels of the vehicle. If you look to your top left, you're going to see the wheels turning. Whenever you turn the front wheels, it indicates the turn on the screen. I'm not sure how useful it is, but it helps if you keep forgetting what side or how much you lock. Yeah, it helps. To the right of that, you're going to see this thing marked standard. Now, this is the normal height of the vehicle. Remember, I showed you what just on the vehicle is lowering. It's going to show lowering here, and you can see it's lowering, and you can see the wheels going down here. If you are raising, it's going to show raising, and you're going to see the wheels are raising up there. This is just showing you a bit more information, because remember, the instrument cluster isn't digital. So you only have lights on a small green screen there. So over here is where you see most of your 4x4 information showing up. What range are you in? What drive select mode are you in? Are you in high, low range? Are you in mud? Are you in rut? Are you in normal? Are you in standard? So this screen is really useful for that. One more thing I want to touch on on the interior here has to be the fact 
that this vehicle doesn't have a backup camera, which is sorely neat because it's a very large vehicle. But they knew this and what they did, I've seen some vehicles since then do the same thing as well. When you put the vehicle in reverse, the side mirror tilts down. I think all automakers need to do this. No matter the size of the vehicle, no matter if you have a backup camera, 360 camera, make the side mirror tilt down. It really helps, especially in tight parking spaces. But how does the Range Rover drive? Well, let's take it out on the road and see. One thing you realize when driving Range Rovers, especially these older generation Range Rovers with their more angular and boxy design, is that you feel like you are sitting on top a Range Rover versus inside a Range Rover. You sit so high up, which is good because not only does the Range Rover have a commanding presence no matter what lane is driving in, but you as the driver or the passengers have a commanding view of the road being that high up because you are higher than the average car. And being in a Range Rover, like I said before, you are in your own cocoon. You are not hearing much of the road noise taking place around you as you drive along the road, your pneumatic suspension leveling out all the road imperfections. You're just gliding over the road so gently. And you take solace in the fact that if you are about that life and someone were to challenge you at a red light, you have the power on their hood. You see, people look at these vehicles as a big vehicle and most times you see people driving just casually driving along because they are relaxing. They buy these vehicles to relax. It's a relaxing drive. But don't be fooled by its big imposing presence. The average car on the road will get gapped. Most Range Rovers you could have bought back then and even now, they come V6, they come supercharged V6. But this one was specially imported, so it came with the Jaguar AJ V8 4.2 supercharged engine. So even though the Range Rover is 2.3 tons, you have 385 horsepower and 550 Newton meters of torque to propel it down the road. And it really shows because at no point while driving this vehicle anywhere do you ever feel like you are transporting or driving or pulling or logging around 2.3 tons. It always feels like you are just there gently resting on the power. This is me going up Chancellor and I'm going up Chancellor at no more than 2000 RPM. The engine is just comfortable. In fact, it's asking for more and I'm like, I can't give you any more. You know, there are people walking down the hill. They don't want to take the corner and knock someone down. And the engine is there, give me more, give me more. I'm like, no, 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 ease up. We, we good here. We good at 2000 RPM. And the thing is, this is where two strong points of the Range Rover comes in and you really see it. You are taking turns and because of the pneumatic suspension, it's leveling off the turns. You are taking these turns flat because whatever side of the vehicle starts sagging is going to prop that side up. So you feel as though you are taking the turns as flat as possible. And the second thing is that it has a supercharger. So there's no turbo lag. When I test drive vehicles and I come up here, sometimes you let off the power to take the corner and then you have to get back on the power and you can feel the turbo lag. But here, because of how superchargers work, no turbo lag. You get that low end torque. So at any point in time, you step on your accelerator and you are just ready to go. So the issue I ran into, I thought going up Chancellor would allow me to capture the exhaust load better. But unfortunately, the Range Rover has so much torque that you don't have to mash the accelerator pedal too far down to get the vehicle going up the hill at a safe speed. So I was going up the hill trying to accelerate but still stay safe and was unable to capture any significant exhaust load because you don't have to floor it as much. So when I realized that wasn't going to work, I'm like, okay, I'm going to find a steeper hill to show the power of the vehicle. And this is me going up the hill on top Chancellor Hill. And just listen, just about 1500 RPM, 2000 RPM, and that engine is logging this giant heavy vehicle up there so effortlessly. It's a beautiful thing to drive.
and it felt at home it felt like it needed more like it was telling me let's go power men that is how effortlessly this vehicle carries its weight some vehicles are large and underpowered grand vitara i'm looking at you but again the grand vitara is not in this vehicle's class i'm just giving an example some vehicles are large and, and you know just underpowered this vehicle is large and it seems like it has too much power as though they built the vehicle around the engine versus building a vehicle and then trying to find an engine to put into it but that's not a bad thing because you realize that a vehicle with too much power is never a bad thing it makes driving a joy and whenever you get bored you can just wind your windows down and you have that lovely exhaust note to listen to let's listen to this supercharged 4.2 liter v8 engine That was my brief walk around the Range Rover Sport HSE. As you can see, even though it's close to 13 years at this point, it can still hold its own with vehicles coming out of the showroom right now. It still has the power, it still has the comfort, it still has the luxury, it still has the premium feel, even though it's 13 years old. That is how well built this vehicle is.